What's the word, y'all? We got a brand new top 50 list from Bleach Report. Y'all know personally, I don't like ranking players, but I absolutely love watching other people do it. <laughs> you feel me? I love watching other people do it, and that's what we're doing today. But this is different than some of the other ones we've reacted to because this one is not based on public opinion. This is mostly statistic base, um, based on RPM MVP score. Uh, and to, to tell you the truth, I didn't know what this was until a couple minutes ago. Now, I have not looked at the top 50 list, but I did read through the methodology, and there's a couple different things I need to tell you before we dive into the list. It's a bit, it's a bit complicated. It is a bit complicated. Uh, it's using the RP, uh, the RPR, like I mentioned, uh, previous 10 games, using a schedule-adjusted version of the game score metric. Obviously, basketball in itself cannot be boiled down to just statistics, but again, this is just us you know, reacting to, to one way you can rank NBA players. I think it's a combination of statistic and eye tests and so on and so forth. Today is really statistic because Sports Math Network put it th put it together. The five components is the true peak, a 10 game peak, the sum, the average, and team success. Now, a few things that they said right at the bottom here that is worth noting that defense is a bit undervalued by this metric, which hurts the both the DPOY fa uh, favorites and the people that don't play defense. And it's also hard to uh, account for things that don't lead to box score contri uh, contributions. I don't know why that word just beat me up. So basically, if you're doing all the right stuff, but you're not getting the statistic that leads to that right stuff, whether it be some really good screening or making the right defensive rotation to cause a miss. Those things are not attributed today. Again, I think there's multiple ways you can rank stuff, and we're just looking at this one way. It also is only accounting for this season. There is no biases as far as like, how was this player for the last 10 years, for the last five? It's looking at the first month of some change sample size, which I personally do like. I don't think it's anything wrong with doing it the other way where you take into account the history of a player, but it is cool to see some form of ranking that only counts to the first 20 or so games of the season. So I want you to keep Keep, keep that in mind as we go through it. Also, keep in mind, uh, these Enjoy Basketball hoodies and hats are going on sale tomorrow at 2 o'clock Central, so 3 o'clock Eastern Time. I think the new logo is clean. I'm basically looking like a big old billboard with the hat and the hoodie. It's also a really cool back piece for the basketball enthusiasts around the world. I think this is drop number five for my brand, um, so I appreciate the support. If you're interested, again, tomorrow at 3 Eastern. All right, let's get into it. The 50th ranked player in the association is DeMar DeRozan. Okay, so they also do show you like, hey, before the season started, the staff of BR had him at 42 when the community had him at 39. Okay, that's good to know. Um, I can't say this is too high or too low. I got to see who's above him. It's Drew Holiday. Interesting. Again, just based on what we see today. Now, now they did say the defense is kind of undervalued, and Drew Holiday has one of his lowest usage years of his entire career. So it makes sense for him to be lower on this specific type of rating. Also, people that missed Desmond Bain missed completely. Whoa. All right. Um, Aaron Gordon missed Zach Levine, Spencer Dinwiddie, Brooke Lopez, Anthony Mel, and Austin Reeves. Okay, these are the players that just missed the Zach. Uh, I'm sorry, DeMar DeRozan is in the top 50. Woo, we feel great. Next, we have Larry Markinen. All right, it's a player I expect to see a little bit higher um, based on statistics alone. Because if I'm not mistaken, he might not be as efficient as he was last season. But his efficiency is still pretty high. Now, it did say right up top here that team success matters. And I'm assuming that's one of the things that brought Larry Markinen down. Then we have Fred Van Vliet. H Towns, very, well, he's Illinois' own, but he plays in H Town. You get what I'm saying? I mean, a nine to one and a half assist to turnover ratio is pretty, pretty good. Obviously, his efficiency is not going to be great as far as shooting the ball goes. But if if he ever got that under wraps, I mean, he's going into year or whatever. So I, I don't know if he'll ever become like an efficient, efficient player. At this point, I don't think it matters too much because he, he provides what he provides, and that's important to them. Rudy Gobert is number 46. Can't be mad at it, especially when we consider that they said the defense is undervalued. Paolo Bencaro. Now, I think Paolo on the season is only averaged at like 20 points per game. He started off relatively slow. He's had a couple really big games. But it's surprising to see him this low considering the Magic are running right now, having a really good season, and he's one of the two most important players a part of that. Three-point shot is coming around at 44% last year. He's about 30. Again, I don't know if that 44% is real, but it's better than 30. You feel me? LaMelo Ball is pretty low. Uh, again, this this thing when the NBA is making him cover up his tattoo bothers me. I understand the idea behind it. It just feels a little bit weird. It looks weird. All right, get well soon. Then we have Franz Wagner. So I'm assuming these are going to be the two people from the Orlando Magic. I don't I don't expect to see a Goga Batazzi. I don't expect to see a uh, 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 Jalen Suggs. So it is Franz Wagner and Paolo Bancaro. D'Angelo Russell. Now, this is very interesting because I recognize that D'Angelo Russell has been pretty good this season. He also has had his fair share stinkers like these last... 
these last couple. But yeah, he had a couple thir- a thirty point game here or so on. But to see him higher than like a Palo of France, it, it is something. Michael Porter Jr. has been on one this season. I like that. I like to see him ranked in the top fifty. Um, co- coming to Kenny Beach podcast feature Michael Porter Jr. I just I just got to say that this is such a crazy excerpt to read. Um, this is the Michael Porter Jr. the Denver Nuggets have been waiting for. Though his three point percentage has dipped into the high thirties, imagine being so good of a shooter that a, you you dip into the high thirties. There's there's players that would what <laughs> get being considered a down three point year still being high thirties is crazy. Jonas Valanciunas has been a tank this season. He's been an absolute tank this season. Um, averaging fourteen nine and two and a half six point one points per. 100 possessions when he's on the floor. So the advanced stats are loving Big Val at the five. And yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a cool season. Evan Mobley, which is interesting because again, they mentioned that defense is not one of the things. Like his defensive on and off numbers are ridiculous. So uh to see him this high with them saying that defense isn't really accounted for that much is, is pretty cool. Pascal's 36 or 38. Um they they t- <laughs> they talk about his spin moves, and I know that's always been a meme with Pascal Siakam, and they can't help but to talk about it. Um, but he's it translates to 20 points per game, seven rebounds, five assists. So he can't really shoot his three point shots anymore. And they talked about how, you know, his uh, trade market is the main conversation around Pascal when indeed he's still a very good basketball player. Julius Randle just had a really good game on national TV that they ended up losing. Um, and this is 100% true. He could be a frustrating watch, but recently he's been putting it together a lot more where he had a 2020 game early this week. And then again, the 40 point, 40 point loss a couple nights ago. So, uh, slowly, but surely getting back to like the form we saw. So last season, like, you know, Julius Randle was like a roller coaster. Year, one year, he's really good. One year, he's really bad. And early on, it felt like this might be a bad season for him. It's not. He's slowly getting back to the version of him that he was last season. Mikhail Bridges, another player that started off relatively slow. Um, when you when you consider that he averaged, what, 26, 27 points per game after the trade last year, he was not looking like that player through the first couple weeks. Recently, he just had a 40-point game, and then he had 36 in the first half, whatever the hell it was. So he's been putting it together as well. Um, and, and it's interesting because, again, they mentioned how it takes like a 10-game sample size to some extent. So Mikhail has been playing some really good basketball as of recently. So it makes sense for him to end up being on his list. DeJounte Murray is at number 35, 39% rate. Um, which which is a career high. I didn't realize he was getting that many three-point shots up. I guess I got a lock in a little bit more to Atlanta Hawks game. Almost six three-point attempts per game, 20 points per game, so on and so forth. Jimmy Butler at 34. Now, uh, a lot of us recognize that Jimmy Butler is the type of player that slowly but surely gets his way into the regular season. I don't think he's played in a single back-to-back this season. Um, so they just kind of get getting it done. I mean, he had his comments early about them being mediocre and stuff, but Jimmy himself has slowly ramped it up again after a slow start to the season. Kawhi Leonard being 33 makes sense to me. Now, the best thing about having Kawhi Leonard is that he has played, I think, every game this season, if not every game, very close to every game this season, which is dope, him and PG uh, playing together. But he hasn't looked like the same player from even last year's playoffs. And I'm assuming some of that is, again, uh, coming off his injury and trying to adjust to having James Harden and all these other pieces and stuff. But he hasn't been the RoboCop Terminator type Hooper that we're used to. And I'm hoping that that version of him is not gone, but just he needs to get himself back into it. The next one, we have Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving started off again. And a lot of these players we're seeing towards the bottom. Or you can't say bottom when you're top 30-ish, but like started off the year slowly, picking it up, picking it up. I think his last game where the game where Luka didn't play, I was like, yeah, this is about to be the game where Kyrie Irving takes over. No Luka, he might put up 30. Man, had like 12 points. I'm like, what is going on, Re? But uh, yeah, we I think we understand Kyrie Irving's greatness, but um, 32 makes sense when you look at the broader scope of this entire season. Jalen Brown is at 31. Gotti Barnes at 30. This is one of the players I was assuming was going to end up I guess it's not too far. I was thinking 25 is range. It's not too far from what I expected. Of course, he's a most improved player candidate. He's been coming out. The three-point shot looks better. He's everywhere on defense. The playmaking looks a lot better. I've enjoyed Scotty Barnes' progression in year number three. I did expect him to be a little bit higher, but I'm not mad at 30. I mean, if you're looking at it from, again, just from this one rating, the Raptors could say, hey, we have one of the top 30 players in the association, and he's also, what, 21 years old? I don't know how old he actually is, but he's young. Here's Paul George. So this is saying that so far this season, Paul George has been the better, um, the best clipper in the, on the team, right? Because I'm not going to see Russ in the top 30. I'm not going to see James Harden in the top 30. So it really is Paul George. And he started off really hot. 
And then after the trade happened, I'm like, yo, what's going on, PG? He just hit the game winner in their last game versus the Warriors or something. Um, so uh, Paul George still putting it together. Uh, dunks and threes estimated. Uh, plus minus has him sitting in the 93rd percentile on offense and 82nd percentile on defense. That just lets you know the advanced stats. I love PG season. I'm loving Tobias Harris's season. He overpaid at one point. I can't even argue that that was the case. But last year of his deal, no James. He's had the freedom to be the player that we knew he could be. I mean, he was a guy that whether it be in Detroit or the last year with the Clippers, he was like, Oh, man, it's Tobias Harris going to sneak his way on the all-star ballot. Not in the actual game, but the all-star ballot. And we're getting closer to that version of him. I mean, the rankings and before the season had him at 100. He's all the way up to 28 right now. I think that's a, a combination of empowering him through Nick Nurse, having um, uh, Joel Embiid be like this hub and, and finding Toby a little bit more. He's not just relegated to sitting in the corner and catching a shoot, and they're allowing Toby to play his game, which is dope, especially considering this is a contract year for him. So he's probably super happy about that. Uh, Devin Booker at 27. Okay, I got to read this one. Uh, injuries have limited the dynamic guard for, to just 11 appearances, so that's probably playing a part in this one because he has been really good. Uh, I know the last night's game, maybe not so much, but I'm looking at the broader scale of his, his game's play so far. Ah, uh, Booker's individual components on the RPR MVP score uh, all leaves him in the cusp of top 10. However, he checks in at number two, <laughs> at number 210 in the volume component due to his limited time on the court. So it's really just the fact that he's missed a bunch of games. Next, we got Porzingis. I love the fact that we got Porzingis in Boston. You have to think about him being a one option, two option. Currently, he is injured, and that, that played a big part in them losing the Indiana Pacers game, or I guess them not looking as great recently. But when Porzingis plays, they have the best five-man unit in almost the history of basketball. Like, that's how nasty of a unit they have. To have a seven-foot-plus guy that can shoot, uh, protect the paint, all of those type of things, Porzingis is turning into... Not turn into a player that we expected, but like last year he was really good as well, but he also played in Washington. And they weren't getting nationally televised games. They was losing and stuff. So he's playing very similar ball to last year, but he's playing for a winner. So a lot of people are opening their eyes. Zion. And this is the crazy part because I think the Zions have a really good season, but not as good of a season as I think he can have. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool to see him 25. We also haven't seen Brandon Ingram yet. And I would, I cannot see a world where Brandon Ingram's not in the top 50 based on the season. So if he, that means that Z is at 25 and Brandon Ingram's er, uh, later in the list, the Pelicans are working and they're in the in-season tournament, conference, or semifinals. Come on, man. Z's been playmaking a lot more. They've been playing a lot more small ball, which is fun for me to watch. Um, the Pelicans are a team I've enjoyed a bunch and they were a team I was super high on going into the season. So I know there are only a couple games over 500, but Trey Murphy III is back. Jose Alvarado is back. Everybody's pretty much back that deserves minutes. So I'm excited to see what the Pelicans look like. Alperin Shingoon. Yes, yes. I love to see Alp this high on the list. Uh, 24th in the entire association. Like 24th means that you're you're an all-star caliber player. You think about how many people are in the all-star game. 24th means that Alp right now, again, I know we got to talk about East versus West, but just in the broader scope, Alp is one of the all-star caliber players, which makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. Then we got Donovan Mitchell. I, I talked about, or I'm talking about it on the podcast I'm filming later today, that the Cleveland Cavaliers are one of the more confusing teams in the league to me. I'll leave it at that, and I'll, I'll dive into it a little bit more. But Donovan Mitchell, I think that even if he's having a down year, and I don't even think that's the case, um, he, he's just going to be so good. He's going to end up high. Uh, this may be a little bit lower than you would want for Donovan Mitchell, but again, the, the Cavs in itself have had so many injuries. This lineup versus this has been weird. Uh, then we got Brandon Nickel. So, yeah, I knew he had to be on the list. There was no way we was getting through top 50 without B.I. on the list. He's been incredible as well. The shot making has been uh, ridiculous. The three-point shot has not come around this season. But, again, career, um, career he's average, uh, league average. Last year, he was really good. So, I doubt that he's going to be a 30% three-point shooter. Five dimes a game, only two and a half. A sit, uh, two and a half turnovers. Again, I just really enjoy watching that team play. A rookie. Oh, this makes me think that the other is, is Wimby gonna be here too? Because again, it's counting stats and everything, but also they mentioned team success. Chet has team success, counting stats, efficiency, and all of that. So I think I don't think Wimby's gonna make it. I guess we'll see, but I don't think Wimby's gonna make it. Chet is near the top twenty 
Um, Jaden, J Dub, they say he was snubbed. So it's really just Shea and Chet as the top two players in OKC advanced stats wise. That makes sense to me. He's been incredible. I've talked about it a lot, so I'm not going to spend too much time. There's Bam at number 20 in the league. Been one of my favorite watches so far this year. Sometimes you get a game where Bam is ultra aggressive. Some games he's the playmaker. There's some games there's no Jimmy Butler and he's the guy and he's making all the right reads and also playing great defense. Bam is one of those um uh hoop heads favorite players but i don't mean like a hooper hooper i mean like an advanced stats slash nerd player bam of the bio is one of those dudes and that's probably why i enjoy watching them play next we have jalen brunson okay jb okay jb so yeah we already saw julius randall so that's gonna be their guys i don't think nobody else is here even though mitchell robinson's really good um when he wants to be i think there's times where he's just moping around the court but uh jalen brunson nothing more you can really say um, other than he's one of the best point guards in the entire Eastern Conference. Should be an all-star this season. Only time will tell. Then we have Damian Lillard. And that's why I said one of the best. Because Dame is going to be here. I'm sure Tyrese Maxey and... and um, oh, Tyrese Maxey and Tyrese Halliburton haven't been mentioned just yet. So, yeah. Jalen Brunson's one of the... He, well, he has been one of the top point guards in the league. Uh, Eastern Conference. There you got Damian Lillard. Again, the numbers are coming around after a slower start. I think that if they do this again at the 50 games mark, he'll probably be in the top 15 because he's been really good as of recently. Nothing more you can say. The defense ain't going to be there for the team, but the offense is really there. There's Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards at 17. I'm assuming that means Carthony Towns is at like number 12. Carthony Towns. Okay, I'm not trying to take away from what Anthony Edwards is doing. Shout out to my guy Ant. Ant but Carnegie Town so far this season, again, just this season, the sample size we have, Carnegie Town has been the best player on the Minnesota Timberwolves, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? He's been as consistent as ever. He's 50, 40, 90 right now. He's locked in defensively. But having Anthony Edwards as a guy that hasn't taken that big, big jump yet, and I know it's in there. I don't know if it's happening this season or next season. I know it's in there. So to see him playing the way he is, where he's still number 17, and we still ain't seen that next real evolution, and also see a card that, come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, he's right there. Okay, so there's Carnegie Towns right there. So he's number 16. Again, I mentioned 50, 40, 90, 7 foot. Their, their uh, defense is another story. Ooh. Oh, no. They're saying his defense is locked. See, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Oh, man. Okay, then we have De'Aaron Fox. Actually lower than I expected, but I'm assuming this has to do with him missing a bunch of games. Just 14 out of the game. So, yeah. Um, it's just play for So, yeah, yeah. So, I'm assuming that's that. Also, they haven't had a really tough schedule. So, that plays a part too. Also, his teammate, Demonte Sabonis, is right there. They got number 14, number 15 in Sacktown. Um, these jerseys are a lot better. Wow. I didn't realize these jerseys. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, they got Domo, D Domantis, and the Ox and the Fox back to back. Again, they've been playing great basketball. Obviously, they didn't win their in season tournament game the other night, but I still feel pretty good about the Sacramento Kings and what they've been trying to do. Um, I think De'Aaron Fox, again, last game is probably going to hinder this a little bit, but I think he's been playing at an MVP caliber level. I wouldn't have him on my top five right now, but if you did have him top five again, I wouldn't be mad at you. Then we got Seth Curry at number 13. Are they saying that his playmaking is trending in the wrong direction? But most says because his teammates cannot hit shots. <laughs> Next, we have Anthony Davis. Uh, three is everywhere defensively, so it makes sense to me that he's this high. Um, but again, they said that defense don't matter too much. E either way, they said that box score defense does matter, and he's leading the league in blocks per game. And he also gets a steal per game. So I, that makes sense that he's here. Trey Young. And, and this is where, again... They're talking box score, statistics, and so on and so forth. Trey Young is going to get his stats. You know what I'm saying? The Atlanta Hawks as a whole, as of right now, has played closer to a 500 team. I was really high on them. Hopefully, when Jalen uh, Johnson comes back, they can break that 500 mold. But thinking about like the players around him, if you ask me based on my eye test, who's had a better season, Trey Young or Steph Curry? I'm going to say Steph Curry for sure. But again, this is what this is what we're talking about, that it's not public opinion. It's based on the stats. And based on the stats we're talking about, the RPR, he, he's number 11. I mean, his, he's going to get a lot of assists. He's going to get his points up. He's had a couple games where his three-point shot has looked better, you know. So I, I'm not completely mad at it, but it is surprising to see him this high. There's Luka at 10. Surprising to see him this low. Um, considering the fact that he's Luka Doncic. Combination of an 18th ranked margin of victory and the 25th ranked strength of schedule leaves Dallas at 21 in the SRS. Despite the winning record um, in, in turn, they just saying, okay, they're saying that, hey, they're winning by not a lot and their schedule hasn't been too crazy. So that's knocking Luka Doncic a little bit. Uh, 23rd ranked defense. Yeah, okay. Next, we have uh, LeBron James, the oldest man in the entire association. Still looking at top 10 numbers. I mean, what, what else can you really say? I think we've talked a lot about LeBron James' greatness. We saw it again yesterday with another great performance. I don't think I got to say much more. You know, Bron. There's Tyrese Maxey. Sheesh. 
Tyrese Maxey, 27, 7, and 5. Woo! I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. I don't really know what else to say. So last year, he had an 8.168. This year, he has a 13, 6, 6, 2, 5. Again, these numbers don't mean nothing to really me or you. But, like, just looking at it at face value, value um, he's got significantly better at whatever this is. At least some, last year, at least some sandwich between Jaron Jackson Jr. and Nicholas Claxton. Um, at the 50 best mark, and now he is number eight. Number seven is going to be Tenton Tatum. Jason Tatum makes sense to me. He's been, again, another really good player. Um, at this point, like, how much can I really say? Like, I think I talk more about the the lower numbers or the higher numbers. But when we get down to the nitty-gritty, like, what can I say about Tatum that ain't already been said? You've watched Jason Tatum play. You've watched Tyrese Maxey play. You've watched Kevin Durant play. All right, KD. Number five is going to be Tyrese Halliburton. Again, going to get his stats. Um, going to be close to 50, 40, 90, engine to the number one offense in the league. It makes sense advanced stats wise to have similar to what I said about Trey Young. When you talk about the the uh, the rate at which they have the ball, the rate at which they're incorporated in the actions, where they be them playmaking or them hitting shots. It makes sense that these type of players are going to be high because the Indiana Pacers have the number one offense. I think Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks have like number two and number three. So it makes sense when you think about the stats that we're referencing to have them this high. Do I believe that Tyrese Halliburton is the fifth best player in the NBA? No, but this stat got him at number five. Number four is going to be Mr. Antetokounmpo. This picture, he's just in a black void. Where is this taken? Where, what the heck is going on? Okay, so who has been said? Joel Embiid hasn't been said. Nikola Jokic hasn't been said. And Shea Gears Alexander. Yep, okay. There's Joel, there's Shea, there's Jokic. Yep, those are the three players that are left. Those are the three players that are left. Wow. All right. Um, That is a new top 50 list strictly based on this stat of RPR. Uh, let me know what you think. What did they hit? What did they miss? I don't even know if you can say what they hit or what they missed because it was stats based. This is, this is not them thinking like, hmm, this player is better than the other. It's literally just stats. So you can't. You can't dispute it. Yeah, whatever. 